just a little bit I think I can overdrive this just a little bit I think I can overdrive it just a little bit Yo, 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 what is up? And welcome back to another episode of the Yo, Yo, Yo podcast with Martin and Hooter. What's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Yo, Yo, Yo podcast. Good morning, good afternoon, good night, good whatever hell time you're listening to. Hope you are having the most marvelous time of your life. We have a very special guest with us today, the lovely and talented Paula Garces. Paula, hi! Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, first of all, I gotta say that you are a workaholic. You are grinding, girl. Like you are, you don't stop. I want like there's so much to. We're gonna talk about you know your 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 new video game, your your comic book, your acting career, your your you're doing, and you're 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 are you a parent too? Oh my God, Mama got some babies. Uh, Why do you think t- listen, I don't stop? The listen, hustle does not stop. Let me tell you something. And when do you take time to just breathe? Do you breathe or do you say, fuck it, I don't need to do that? <laughs> <laughs> I will breathe when I'm dead. Really? I don't know if that even makes sense. It doesn't. But <laughs> um, no, I mean, I, I, I love what I do. I am blessed to do what I love for a living and I am humbled by it and I thank everyone that allows me to do so that I can feed my babies uh, take comfort uh, give comfort to my family because of it so I am just giving back what I have received actually dude okay first of all you said a lot right there and (laughs) one of the words that that really stuck out was I'm humbled Mm -hmm. and that is so you know I, I hear it a lot but are you really? Because, dude, you're kicking ass right now. How how hard is it to stay humble when you're over there killing conquistadores and you're on a on a hit Netflix show <laughs> and you've got still the one of the biggest cult movies in in marijuana's history with Harold well, and Kumar? And, but you're humble, dude. You know how you're hard, a mom. And you know how hard it would be. Like if I if Hooter was still a kid and I was doing all that, the last thing I would do would be humble. Hey, cabrón, get up! You know all the shit I'm. <laughs> doing like that is so how, how do you i don't home? do half of that shit and i throw it in my kid's face <laughs> right now <laughs> listen uh you know when you've been an actor and a latina actress and by the way i, I never gave myself that title that's just the title that was given to me by hollywood right mm-hmm, it, mm-hmm. when you've been an actor like myself who's been working in hollywood for 32 years you better stay humbled that will humble you like no other business in the world. So I've had uh, really high highs, right? Mm-hmm, <laughs> and mm-hmm. some deep, deep, deep down lows that have brought me, you know, down to earth. And I've, I've learned some lessons. And my family, who's a typical Latino family, there's Colombians, there's Caribbean in there, there's Mexicans in there. And, you know, nobody like your family to keep you humble, right? When you think you're shit doesn't stink and you getting a big head your family be like mm, you know you could have did better in that movie oh, or wow. that <laughs> or you looked a little goldita you eat Damn. a lot of tacos and empanadas huh <laughs> you know so so you know what uh yeah i mean all jokes aside uh the entertainment business is hard but it's what i love uh i li- live and breathe you know the entertainment business is my oxygen and staying creative is how i like to live Dude, 32 years in Hollywood. I, I started comedy 22, 23 years ago. I started in 99. And, uh, you know, you've been doing, you've been acting longer than Hooter's been alive. Um, <laughs> oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, he, he just turned <laughs> 30. No, 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 no. And, Your and boy was bur- born in 91. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and so... That's a ve- that's a lot of longevity right there, yeah. um, and 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 like you said, you know, today 
you've got, uh, fortunately, and, and it's about time, you know, there, there's still a lot of inequality, but there's way more representation today than there's ever been uh, on television. I remember when I started comedy in 99, I kept hearing, oh, it's it's our time, it's Latinos time. And I remember people telling me 10 years ago was our freaking time. Right. And and then you had George Lopez had a sitcom and that was it. There right. was nobody <laughs> they else. They a little bone here you and know, there. <laughs> yeah, you know, but now there's so much more representation. 32 years ago, my God, even now you get a lot of typecasting how much crazier was it back then? And you must have been a little kid, obviously, when you started, you know? Yes, uh, I, I started when I was uh, 15 years old, and basically my mom was a single mom of two girls. Uh, my mom and my grandmother immigrated from Colombia uh, to New York City, to be exact, and my mom came to this country pregnant, so by chance, I was born American, <laughs> right? I was born in New Why? York City. Bendito sea Dios. Uh, right? She like <laughs> just made it. My abuelita heard that she was pregnant, and my, my abuelita was like, you better come to the States now. <laughs> so your abuelita was already here. She was already here. She was hustling. She got married to a uh, good old Irish boy, uh, 15 years her junior. Oh, good yeah, that's for how her. She did it. What? That's how Colombian women do it. Way well, back well, look when. Colombian women are beautiful. I mean, <laughs> listen, there's there's 50 year old Colombian women that look better than you know 25 year old me. Well, this good old <laughs> Irish boy was fresh off the navy, and I guess he saw her somewhere in the West Side and was like, "That's my wife," you know, like in the supermarket or something, as the story goes. But anyway, because of that Irish boy, all of my Colombian family basically have their papers. Yes. That's how it went. Hey, man, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, I'm sure that that Irish guy, uh, his ancestors did some kind of chain migration right. back in the day as well. And listen, my family gave him uh, a lot of joy, a lot of joy. So uh, so we are grateful and, and he and he's completely grateful back. And um, but anyway, the story goes that uh, my mom was a single mom in Spanish Harlem and she didn't want me to be in trouble. Right. She wanted to get me out of trouble because back in the 80s it was like a dangerous hood mm -hmm. and basically it was like go do some art you know go get dance classes or acting classes or whatever and i was like i want to make money you so. were you were you were <laughs> you were uh, uh a teenager in the 80s in 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 harlem in spanish harlem yes. in spanish harlem yes. um that is the there's a there's a book i, I don't i get off track sometimes but no, there's okay. a book there's a book called random family set in the bronx with a uh um during the 80s during uh -huh. the crack epidemic because there was a big crack epidemic in the yes, 80s there was. and nobody was selling heroin there was this one puerto rican kid named boy george selling heroin and he was doing life in prison and there's uh there's a woman who was doing the, her dissertation uh, for a sociology class who goes to start interviewing people that are doing life in prison wow. and she gets so fascinated by the stories of this guy and his uh circle of friends that she ends up writing this phenomenal book. Well, I'm gonna go get it. It's uh, it's called Random Family. Uh, Oprah had the uh, the the people. On, this was years ago, and I'm you know not not plugging Oprah or nothing, but but the book was huge. It was on the and and I have a friend. He's a comedian named Felipe Esparza. Felipe is got ADD. No disrespect. I love him. One of the funniest <laughs> dudes out there. Check out his uh, latest special. Uh, uh, um, translate uh, translate this on HBO. Mm -hmm. But he. Uh, uh, was reading the book and he focused and he just was like constantly reading. I'm like, okay, if this book can keep this dude's attention, <laughs> it's, it's a phenomenal yeah. book and I could not put it down. It and he just, still brings up that book to this day. Felipe still brings it up. But when you, but when you mentioned New York in the eighties, that's when this was set. And my God, was it crazy? Your mom must have been pulling out her hair. I'm trying to put myself in her place. So yeah, I mean, you know, it was it's a neighborhood that is predominantly back then uh, Puerto Rican, Dominican, African American, and then there was an old Italian, still kind of mobsterish, and I'm not being stereotypical. Uh, Pleasant Avenue, which is exactly where I lived. I lived on 118th Street between First and Pleasant. So you know that if I mention Pleasant Avenue, you know I'm not talking shit. I'm really am from from the hood, right? Mm -hmm. So Pleasant Avenue used to be like mobsters. It was uh, that's where Robert De Niro goes to this uh, really famous Italian restaurant called Rayos. And uh, I have a story about that. I mean, I was I was never as a kid able to go into this restaurant, even though it was like up on the corner of my of my house, right? Mo only mobsters and movie stars went there. <laughs> and then later Ooh. on, I had a 360 in that restaurant because one of the owners was doing Law and Order 
as a mm. guest star. Mm -hmm. And I got one of my first guest starring roles. It was a big deal for me. Uh, one of the b first big TV jobs in New York City on Law and Order. And him and I got to work together. And I put him on blast right on in <coughs> front of all the producers and everybody. I was like, yeah. And by the way, you're all nice now, but I never get to go to Rails because like only you have to be like a movie star or whatever. Anyway. Are you out of your mind? You short. said that in front of everybody? <laughs> yes, because yes, I was that kid, you know, popping gum with the truck earrings. And I was putting everybody on blast. Oh, you were like, that 80s was, Latina. Oh, yeah. Mom. I was like, don't be fake. Oh, you just be nice because I'm in this scene. God, room. I love that. Yeah. Anyway, the long story goes that, uh, which is true, he invited myself and my mother to dinner, fully paid, in Rayos, and of course, who was in there that night? Do, uh, Robert De Niro with like a bunch of big wigs, wow. and I got to meet Robert De Niro and was like, hey, I see you, you know, like, what, right while now? eating the best sauce ever, because again, this is, <laughs> this is not a plug to Rayos, I don't plug, no, like, I, we don't plug nobody on this show, right, other than the CBD, <laughs> and it's later. But the Rayo sauce, you guys know, it's in, I just saw it at Vaughn's the other day. The Rayo sauce in the jar is like the bomb and it does taste exactly what? like the restaurant in New York City, which is the real deal Italian food. Anyway, my mom was trying to get me, you know, not, not for me not to be in trouble. Mm -hmm. I was auditioning and I was very lucky. My first four jobs, guys, you're mm -hmm. not going to believe me. So this is back in the... 80s early 90s right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh i go into i i get a i get a ma i get an agent i don't know how i did this but i get an agent i didn't have headshots i didn't have money for headshots she takes 15 polaroids oh my god i'm aging myself yes polaroids you know what polaroids are mm -mm. he has no idea <laughs> google it so 15 <laughs> polaroids which meant 15 auditions uh, out of the 10 first auditions, so the first 10 Polaroids, I got my first five auditions, right? And the first five auditions, yes, I worked with Martin Scorsese, I worked with Spike Lee, Ooh. and then I did a Fritos commercial, and then I did Law and Order, and then New York Undercover. Okay, and humble. Wait, wait. <laughs> oh! Now, have I worked with? <laughs> <laughs> so this is way back when when Spike Lee was doing an AT&T commercial. Oh my god! So I did god. an AT&T commercial, and then I did a. Was, uh, do the uh, right thing was around that time. Yes, and then I did a public service announcement with Martin Scorsese. Now, have I what worked with the? these two amazing directors ever again? What they? That's, <laughs> no. okay. that's, that's still on that's the that's 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 Listen. <laughs> No. There are people that walk by them and give themselves <laughs> a credit. Seriously, like, but no. I could, I, I don't know. I don't know if they remember this or whatever. I'm sure there's footage of what I did with them and how they directed me. But AT&T commercial with Spike Lee, and it was a public service announcement about HIV and AIDS. Oh, my God. With Martin Scorsese. Dude, is this agent still out there? Right? <laughs> I mean, this guy did work. Dude, he was connected. Dude, this guy. Um, Actually, a she. Why are she we was assuming connected. it's a he? Oh, oh so toxic. Honestly, Canceled. It, honestly, it's because we were talking before I was even born, so I just assumed automatically it was a dude, but now you know what? It is 2021, and I do take that back, and I'm sorry, and uh, props Dios to the mio. woman. They uh, have the first Latina superhero that's, be, the first Latina producer of a video game. The first Latina creator of a, of a video game. The first Latina voice of a... And, and, here we and are they're assuming, and we're assuming it's, it's gotta be male. It's gotta be a oh, man. No. It's gotta be a man who's getting you Clearly all this work. Clearly men are opening the doors for you at this time. Wow! <laughs> Listen, um, a man had to make the sauce in that awesome <laughs> restaurant. A man had to be getting you all that work. It was a man who made the It was a man who the, made the rails. The Irish <laughs> man gave you guys all the papers. The Irish guy did give us all papers. No, I'm just talking they shit. Did. But you know what? <laughs> I do take it back. I automatically no, 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 assumed. We automatically assumed there was an agent. Dude. Okay. Now, it's now, okay. now, uh, now, did you, <laughs> did you it's take, right, guys. Look, I'm touching them. Did, did you them. take, did you take acting classes before any of this or all no. you had was the Polaroids to your power? No, I was just literally, uh, I, I feel like I was born a hustler and uh -huh. at the time I had this disease called just being blunt and talking oh. <laughs> and not thinking about like what flies out of my mouth what before I say it. <laughs> You're like, relapsing. <laughs> like, I, like 
like I got a huge movie called Dangerous Minds, right? Yeah. And Jerry Bruckheimer is obviously a huge producer, right? And so when I first get I'm the movie, call this episode humble. Wait. <laughs> When I, first I want to wait. I want to hear about the deep lows that you had because it sounds like it's all been up, dude. It's coming. This it's shit's coming. unreal. There's no valleys oh in this god. story. Oh my god. Just peaks. <laughs> oh my god! I am sweaty. I'm so shiny. I hope it looks like just like glow. Oh. It doesn't look like glow. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> so look, um, Jerry Bruckheimer is this huge producer, <laughs> and I say no. I can't do your movie. Oh. And no, perate. Watch why. Watch. Oh. This is why. Okay, this was my thinking at the time. So I got pregnant at 17. Good and, for you. And when I went to this audition, I literally was like, hold my baby. And I go into the audition, rock the audition, and then come back and get my baby, right? What? And so they were, they obviously were like, she's the most authentic thing. She's the real deal. Really? We need to have her in our movie, right? So I go home, I get the call, you got the movie. And I was like, oh, too bad, I can't do it because I don't have a babysitter. Like my mom no is over way. it. She's not gonna babysit for me and like I can't afford a babysitter. What? Yeah, so the agent's like obviously confused and hangs up or whatever. I get a call from Jerry Bruckheimer. <laughs> what? Oh I get a call God. from Jerry Bruckheimer. Listen, we just hired a Mexican <laughs> nanny for you. She's going to be next to nothing. She's <laughs> doing it for her papers. Do you still know the Irishman? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, dude, you could do my movie. Don't worry. You're going to afford a babysitter. We're going to pay your mom. She's going to fly out. You can do my movie. Wow. And so, yeah, that was wow. my first experience with Jerry Bruckheimer and Michelle Pfeiffer. Back in the 90s. Th that is so awesome. And the uh, coolest thing about that movie, I mean, obviously, Michelle Pfeiffer is amazing and icon. But to me, back in the day, the coolest thing about that was Coolio and Gangster's Paradise. Of course. Mm. That is still an anthem. And I was like, I, I felt so West Coast back then, too, because I was uh, East Coast. You were girl. still East Coast. Mm -hmm. And so when I came, I, I was I was schooled on what the West Coast flavor was and was hooked. And I've been here, you know, pretty much back and forth ever since. And that was you at 17? No, that was, so, okay, so 94, that, I was 20. Okay. 20. And your boy was three. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter was two. There was a, there <laughs> I could be your mama. There was a, there was a, uh, como se dice, there was an earthquake that year. Yeah. Northridge. Shook Northridge. me out of bed. I thought I was going to die. Oh, I had done cocaine all the night before. Oh and I was God. just, I thought I was, you thought you were going to die. My, I was at his birthday party. It was the day right after his birthday party. Oh, damn. <laughs> I know. I wasn't doing cocaine. Good for you. Obviously, uh, it, that would be a very stereotypical thing for me to do as a Colombian, Colombian girl. <laughs> But I, pro I mean, I don't know. I was probably smoking some weed back then, I'm hey, sure. Let me ask you this. Being a Colombian uh, uh, be, or, or having Colombian heritage rather mm -hmm. uh does that come up a lot or people are like oh was your family like escobar blah 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 like it must come up all the time it comes up all the time and sometimes it bothers me only because it hits uh close to home court sure uh and 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 i fess up to that court and fess up to that reality uh, in my family only because my family has suffered a lot from it it's it's a very real issue and it's things that we have uh, learned and grown from but also have had tremendous losses because of it so the cocaine problem and the cocaine era in Colombia is definitely a very real thing but it's not the only beautiful uh, the only thing <laughs> the about only beautiful, beautiful. The only thing about Colombia <laughs> that should be highlighted, there are a lot of, there are a lot more beautiful things about sure. Colombia than just, that, you know, that, that beautiful does, that's cocaine. Not the only, that's not the only thing that <laughs> defines Colombia. No. And no. unfortunately, that's what everybody thinks. But Colombia, like when you see some of the, 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 the footage, it, it's just a beautiful, beautiful yeah. place. It's a beautiful country. Uh, I have a lot of family that's still there. There's a lot of talent, a lot of creativity. Uh, there's a lot of growth. Yes, obviously COVID has... Um, hit the country really hard, but the rest of the world has too. Uh, but I understand that Colombia is super strong. Y Fuerza Colombia, I'm sure th that they're gonna, you know, su surpass what's going on right now and survive and, and get better.
Oh man, listen, I, we're, we we just went down a, a, an amazing memory lane right now with uh, with with how your career literally started on fire, <laughs> and you were like on a on a rocket ship, uh, you know, bigger than AMC and Dogecoin. I was just about to, to say, say, your career sounds like <laughs> yeah. Dogecoin. Yeah, you're, you're right, going to the true. moon over here, <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, and and then you know, obviously, you know the 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 cult classic, which is uh, you know Harold and Kumar go to White Castle, and you're like the you 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 know little kids still in on that sure. movie you know and and uh just killed that role i mean you know the, the the parts where you came out it was just memorable maria was just memorable and still is to this day right Aww. um and but you've done so much more since then and you know i want to fast forward you know not to, to to because i mean like i said it's just fascinating but i want to cover where you're at right now which sure. is just huge uh but i want to fast forward to 2008 which is when you launched your comic book is that correct That's or am I, correct. Or do I have the wrong? okay so 2008 now you you are now entering a in an area that is dominated by men and yes. and uh, white men, you know, more than yes. more than anything else. Sure. Uh, talk about, you know, uh, the, the and we didn't even go down the road of typecasting and, and all the <laughs> right. other stuff in the in the in the in the um, entertainment industry. But in the comic book industry, women are usually relegated to be these these just sexy chicks with their tits flying out. Yeah. And, and that's it, you know, and and stay there and be quiet. And, and uh, you know, it's almost like uh, like yeah. being, you know, like Yoshiro, you talk too much shut up just look pretty uh, uh that's the guy though the olympic committee in japan by the way but <laughs> you know yoshiro you know yoshiro oh shit yoshiro say uh, women should come but should shut the fuck up <laughs> okay not disrespect to the asian community we love sushi okay oh my, now, god. Oh my god i know what a so double toxic. down Cancel. i can't uh, i know that was those are the opinions expressed by martin marino are not that of all of curses no or the so, yo-yo podcast because that's <laughs> fucking extreme wow dude. okay so now now uh but you entered this this world of of comic books what the hell pushes you to that were you a, a big a, a fan of that world uh what what is it that that just you know peaked uh, pushed you in that direction sure so in 2008 i got um an invitation to go to my first comic con i had no idea what comic con was about i was part of the reboot of knight rider i was on the shield <laughs> and i had just finished uh we, harold and kumar was out and it was like it, it hit Right. Sure. It was a, it was a big hit. So I, I walk into Comic-Con and it's like you feel the love right away. And it's an explosion of cartoon and real life and superheroes and comic books. And I had no idea that that world existed. And I was like, these are my people. This is what I get to do for a living. I dress up. I recite other people's lines and, you know, act cool and ridiculous or whatever. Right. I'm a geek. These are my people. I love it. Mm -hmm. Very quickly, I realized there was a lot of Latinos, a lot of Asians, a lot of black people. Uh, there are fans. Buying a lot of things mm -hmm. that did not represent them in a positive way. Right. Mm. And I was like, where are the Latino or Latina superheroes? And I was pissed. I was pissed. Like I had a great time over there, but I went home and I was really mad. And then people around me who love me were like, hey, listen, don't get mad. Create your own superhero. And forget it. You can't tell a Latina to create her own superhero. It just like it just I just went off my creativity, my mind. But then I was also going through some stuff where I felt real ignorant about like my history, my own history in this country or like Latinx history in this country. And I was really thinking about all these things. And then I was getting hit with a lot of like, but she's not Mexican or she's not Puerto Rican and she's mm. this, you know, I've been privileged and lucky enough to be able to be an actor that has portrayed Mexican-American women, uh, uh, um, Colombian women, Venezuelan women, you know, Italian women, Puerto Rican, Dominican, you know, because I, I, I feel like I can do my homework and, and get into all of that, I right? I mean, listen, they've, the Cleopatra, who was black, has been portrayed by nothing but white women. Exactly. So there you go. So <laughs> anyway, uh, I, I did all of that, and I was like, how can I create a superhero that can unite our Latinx community? And so I started to read books about ancient civilizations of South America, Central America, the Caribbean, and started to realize that a lot of them, yes, in their mysticism and, and just their magic and the kings and queens, that we, that we come from this very rich culture that a lot of us are very ignorant about. 
Um, but they all pretty much believed in one thing, is Mother Earth, positivity, health, taking care of one another. So I decided to mix all of that mysticism uh, to ask a big question in history. What if our ancestors had a, a, an aluna, a, a superhero, that would give the conquistadors a weight of gold, right? That would give them a hell of a fight. How would our present look like today? Would we even speak Spanish? Because like when you think about it, Spanish mm -hmm. isn't even our native tongue. Like we would no. have so many other dialects. Would we be united? Or did our tribes also also fight amongst each other? And you know, come on, the, the flowery wars were, were yeah, a real thing. They were a real thing. So I basically based my my the Aluna superhero on that, and I, and the uh, origin story takes place in the 16th century. And so Aluna is half Pachamama goddess. And, 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 na and native, you know, South American and with all of that combined, and half Española Conquistadora, which is a very real battle that we all have, right? Are we white? Are we Latin? Are we African American? Are we not? You know, like mm -hmm. all of these things, so, right? So that makes, uh, that makes her a demigod. Yes. Yes, and she's very conflicted and confused, and she doesn't know her real destiny. And so her origin story is what the eight books, the comic books that I have out, and the graphic novel that's out, that's what, that's what it entails there. And the video game takes place right after where the comic books leave off, right? She's in South America because she had to uh, escape Spanish persecution because they call her a witch, they brand her a witch. And she goes back to South America to sort of find out where is she getting these superpowers? What, what are her roots, you know? Who are her people? And she realizes that the Spanish people that she's grown up with in royalty are committing these atrocities. In, in, in the new world, right? And so she's very conflicted about that because her father is one of them, right? And then she has to, she has to fight in the jungles of South America and Colombia, also rival tribesmen. And so she realizes, she, in, in this journey, she's gonna have an adventure where she realizes what are her superpowers? What is her true destiny? And how can she save her people? And how can she become the Aluna, right? The daughter, the leader, of Pachamama, of Mother Earth. And that's basically what the what the video game entails. And the video game is really cool because you you get to fight as a Luna. You're in you're in an action RPG game, but you're guided by these cutscenes that come in and it's basic basically motion comics that are taken from the artwork of the comic books oh, that guide cool. you and they tell you, hey, there's a clue over here, or there's a weapon over here, or hey, you're you're not novice enough to get that superpower yet, you know? Mm. And they give you clues on how to how to battle the bosses, how to get to the next level. But I'm hoping that people play it, yes, out of curiosity of the fact that um, video games or the Hollywood hasn't really, not even touched the surface of the mysticism of our ancestors, right? It's usually the Greek mythology or the European mythology that, that gets a lot of you know, attention. But I think there's such a missed opportunity, especially in the Latin American community. We mean we have the Mayas, the Aztecs, the Incas, the, the, we have the Quechua, we have the Chipchas, we have the Tairona of the Caribbean. I mean, there, I can go on and on and on and on and on. And that's just the surface of, of what I've read about. And like some of this, I mean, most of the superpowers that we gave Aluna, I did not even have to be that creative. There, it's things that, uh, you know, our ancestors, ancestors believed in. The Aluna name came from a, a tribe called the Kogi who were literally just, and I'm putting in quotes, discovered in 1974. Oh they were God. able to live incognito from society till 1974. Wow. And these people live in the Andes and they live peacefully and Off obviously, the grid. yeah, Off and the obviously grid, yeah. their main concern is Mother Earth and peace, right, and health. And they believe in this thing called the, being in the state of Aluna, where you consult a bowl of water and you, and you see yourself in the past your present and the future all at the same time. I read that, I was like, that's it. That is her name, that is one of her superpowers. I love these people, I wanna highlight them. So yes, uh, the game does not represent history to a T. It is not an exact depiction of our history as far as like a representation of any of the ancient civilization. It is a mix, it is inspired by, it is my homage 
my my respect, my bow to all of the things that I have learned. But but yeah, I took a lot of liberties with it. Sure. In order in order to present like the first Latina superhero video game. And that's so crazy that it's 2021 and it's the first and I'm, I'm going to say Latina, but uh, I'm going to backtrack a little bit. You've you've interchanged Latino, Latina, and Latinx. You yes. brought all of them in. Yes. Uh, you didn't exclude any because no, there's some people that so are. It's so complicated. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a lot of people are out there like, no, it's Latinx and don't be a piece of shit. Don't say Latino, Latina. You're excluding uh, the people that don't identify as either uh, him or her. Right. Uh, uh, so th- th- how do you, th- th- so like, like I said, you incorporated all of them. So, I try. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's 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 uh that's a whole different world, you know. Yeah, you know, it's a learning process. I, I every time that I talk to young people or talk with young people, um, or young people talk to me, I learn something new. You know, like our our movement, and I'm putting my fists up, are driven by young people. And young people, um, more than any other time that I can remember, are teaching me a thing a, th- a thing or two, and they are definitely driving. Uh, us forward and I I really enjoy that and I am so thankful for that so yeah you know sometimes I I mess up right sometimes I say him her and I and I and I assign gender or sometimes I misspeak and don't say like exactly the right thing that I mean but just know that it's it's all love like honestly Aluna it really is about representation matters. Aluna is about inclusion is it's a it's the story it's my story of how I felt really in 2008. In 2008, I was part of like four or five TV shows. I was, you know, doing movies. I had like a three picture deal. Humble. Like, <laughs> but, but look at that. But look at this. I did not feel seen. Oh, I did not wow. feel seen or heard. So much so that it bothered me that I had to write a comic book. Now you you're, know? you're eight books deep. What, uh, what book did you say, okay, a video game needs to happen to? Oh, I love you. Good question. Actually, it happened at book two. And I had a, it was at a Comic-Con. I got approached by an online video game, an existing online video game called Heroes of New Earth. And um, it's like for, for you gamers out there, it was kind of like the competition to League of Legends, where the world is already existing. You go on, you pick a hero, and then you battle it out with other heroes as the hero that you picked, right? So they saw Luna and I don't know, these people got it right away. And they were like, she fits our world. We would love her. I was kind of, I didn't know what that was about, but okay, we licensed her out. And it really, my whole, my whole theory behind doing that was like, I don't know, let's test her out. Let's see, are gamers going to want to play as a woman? Like, are men, do men play as women? Are they going to care that she's Latina and that, that she has this, like, very, like, real heritage behind her and that she's representing all this, like, Latinidad, right? And uh, I was, like, pleasantly surprised that I was wrong. At her height, she was being chosen for play 90,000 times a day worldwide. Wow. Yes, I said 90,000 times a day worldwide. So Asians dug her, Europeans dug her, men dug her, you know what I mean? So, and out of 100 look plus at, heroes, that, I got, I yeah, got, I got out of 100 shows. plus heroes, she was always top 10. So what does that tell you? That's when I knew, I knew, I was like, ooh, one There's day, one day people are going to want her to have her own video game, right? And she should have her own video game. But it was a long journey. No one wanted to give me money. No one cared. Uh, no one, no one saw what I saw. The numbers didn't, they didn't care. They, I had the numbers. People didn't even care about the numbers. That's insane. So, um, so wow. yeah, but, but we're here now and but I'm we're here now. No, 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 her. it's, it's, it is, that's, that's such an incredible, I mean, look, on top of everything else, you managed to crank out eight freaking books. Yes. Eight books. Uh, with a lot of help. Okay, that's well. That's fine, but you're still like put your, you know, uh, uh, blood, sweat, and tears. So into I have it. to shout out the writers of the Assassin's Creed game. They got it. They got it from the beginning. So they helped me write the, all of the eight books. They wrote the eight books based on 
my the the character that I co-created and gotcha. based on notes that I gave them and stuff that I was into. But they were the ones that because I'm not I'm not a writer per se in like the formal way. Like I'll come in and be like I see this and this and that, and then I have people who love me and respect me and 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 have patience. You're creative. And you yeah, have all the creative that ideas. That organize my thoughts That's because beautiful. I think I have a bit of. ADD as well. <laughs> sure, we all do. Uh, so, so uh, yeah, I want to big a, a big shout out to the writers of Assassin's Creed: The Game, who are who saw it way back when. And I don't know if you guys know, but like when Assassin's Creed first came out, they got a lot of shit for it. They did not think it was gonna be a good a good game. It was rated seven out of ten. The game, like mm-hmm. they did not think it. Like really, they didn't think it was gonna be a but big it hit. Blew up. It, it was yeah. blew up. So I'm hoping, you know, the the Assassin's Creed magic that has been sprinkled and the little dust that has been sprinkled on Aluna mm-hmm. uh, can happen for the game. It, yeah. You know, I I, uh, I purchased the game. I have a 13 year old at home and who's been playing it. And I and I got to tell you, uh, I'm watching this thing and it's like a, uh, I'm seeing some of the images and these these video games are not you know uh the plumbers rescuing the princess <laughs> you know? mario brothers you know? dude unbelievable you know? no, so no, no. grandpa I, I said that on purpose i, I said that it. on purpose you, you need it. these plumbers to rescue this princess now you've got a the, the this this woman who is out there uh, and she's not called the princess she's not called the queen she's the sentinel of the shards yes right? she's and, a warrior and correct the, the guardian yes. the, the, the protector uh the soldier which is really i think you know it could have easily been the queen of the shards the this sure. of the this the that but i think the sentinel is a lot more uh we were talking about representation and inclusion and and it's like and it's not this frail uh uh woman that needs saving as a matter of fact she's out there kicking ass yes and and the thing looks like a a mixture of a freaking you know what's that movie with the blue people Oh, uh, Avatar. Avatar. Avatar <laughs> and ap- just Avatar. A movie. Just Avatar, a movie. <laughs> Avatar meets Apocalypse that, meets what's Game that of small Thrones. Flick with the blue. <laughs> You know, people, the blue people. It's know. like it's like it's like Avatar meets Apocalypto meets Game of Thrones. Just so much stuff. Shout going out on. to Zoe Zaldana, by the way, who's like obviously one of the stars of Avatar, mm-hmm. and James Cameron, obviously, who like is amazing at creating many things, including Avatar. So, yeah, I mean, if you mention a Luna with Zoe Zaldana and James Cameron, hey, no, I'm let's looking do at it, it, and I'm like, this is this is <laughs> this is awesome. It's 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 uh, uh, I'm 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 not a gamer i'm not gonna front here and, and and pretend that i am but i will say when i when i when i uh uh bought it for our kid i'm like this is uh this is this is uh uh a very like the first time that you're seeing a latina doing this yes. uh and again representation matters like crazy when 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 i started comedy there was just paul rodriguez George hadn't even blown up That's yet. That's right. You know, George hadn't even become a, a household name yet, you know? Uh, and so after Que Locos came on board, before Que Locos, you could count, there was 100 from coast to coast. Wow. M- Latino comedians before 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 Que Locos came out, which we're not, we're, we're talking, you know, within the last 20 freaking years, yeah. dude. And, and you could literally count them on one list. Every single uh, person that was doing stand-up that was uh, uh, Latinx or Latino, Latino, Latina. Uh, today, you know, there's a hundred starting every hour, you know, which is fantastic. <laughs> but it's because they saw, oh wow, look at uh, a Gabriel Iglesias, look at a Carlos uh, uh, Mencia or, or George Lopez, uh, Paul Rodriguez. Look at look at these guys. I can do this. I, I they, people got inspired to do it. Um, hopefully this inspires people to say you know back in the day they used to tell people that were playing video games you're wasting your time go do something put that away blah 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 yada yada hey man if you don't know how to operate a a, a controller yeah. you're probably not going to be able to do surgery in this new world you know yeah you're you're probably not going to be there's so many things that rely on knowing how to operate a controller and that eye hand coordination uh these video games 
I was living, I uh, had a roommate out in, uh, by the Third Street Promenade a few years back. Mm -hmm. And this dude busted his ass, and he's a gamer. And he busted his ass to get to where he was in life. Next door to us lived, lived these 20-year-old kids from Spain that had a condo by the Third Street Promenade. <laughs> They were gamers. Wow. <laughs> that were just streaming their stuff. So he's like, okay, look. So I quit gaming so I could do a professional job <laughs> so that I could get some success. These dudes, nobody told them to stop playing, and they've got the same level of success. And, and I now think we're that, neighbors. And <laughs> now we're neighbors. Exactly. And so and so to all the parents that, that are listening, don't tell your kids don't do if what whatever their passion is. Feed that passion. Feed that passion more than anything. Because I think, especially in the Latino community, it's so easy. Go to school and put your head down and work hard. And, and you know, and, and that, there's a lot to be said for that. But also, it's okay to feed their creativity and their love. And if video games is their thing, my God, the door is just beginning to get, uh, to be opened. Sure. You're, you're a pioneer, dude. How does that, that's fucking tremendous. Well, shout out to my mom for like figuring that stuff out when I was, uh, when I was younger, right? Because I mean, I still, I still ended up kind of like a product of my environment because I, I got pregnant at 17 and that's a whole other story. And, I, you know, you, you wanted a little bit of the lows. After Dangerous Minds, I didn't work for a couple of years. So I had to go back on food stamps and I had to go back on welfare and I had to go back to my hood, right, where everybody was like, they saw me in this high and then they were like, what are you doing back here? You know, like, why are you back here? Yeah. You know, and then I, even back then I was still like, oh, I'm going to be a, a actress in Hollywood. You see, you'll wait and see. And so I don't know. My mother was always the one that she she had the vision. Right. I, I was driven, but I think I was also kind of like insane when I was, like, when I was younger. I didn't I didn't understand the word no. That's you know? good. That's and awesome. sometimes it got me in a lot of trouble and sometimes it like propelled me to to just work harder and be more disciplined and, and just like not see the failure as a failure, but just as a stepping stone. I, uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, and you unpacked a lot of stuff. Uh, also, to uh, to play a Luna, you do not need to be an expert gamer. If you are an expert gamer, there is an, a novice level that you can play at. If you are intermediate, there's also a level for you. But if you are a person that, oh, I don't want to pick it up because I'm not a gamer, there's, an, there's a level that's story mode. So you basically, um, it's not like the easy, easy, but it, it, you will learn and you will be driven by the story. Uh, some of the reviews that have come in, because the game literally just launched yesterday on Nintendo Switch. Wow. and on Steam for PC users. And the feedback that we've gotten in some of the reviews have been really, really positive. But the one thing that a lot of people, whether it's a good review or a negative review, have, uh, have agreed upon is that the motion comic book, that the comic book story, that the story itself is extremely entertaining. Yes. So I hope that this is like the first like few steps towards the animation towards the series towards the live action whether it be a series or you know uh or a movie um the the game you can play it in either spanish english or portuguese and yes i ah. said portuguese because i love brazil i i love the portuguese language um i lived in brazil when when i was really young uh, for six months and fell in love and i there's a huge audience there for video games and for my netflix show that i'm currently on and so i really appreciate that fan base too and another thing that uh, that you unpack there is the fact that um, I would love, love, one of my dreams is for like a dad to play with his daughter, right? Father's Day is coming up, or a dad to play with his son, or a mom to play with her son. Like, I just wanna see, so like if you're out there and you did buy the game and you can like videotape it, I will definitely repost it and highlight you and all of that stuff. And as far as the plumber <laughs> and the princess, <laughs> let's get back to that, because I am a businesswoman. Uh -huh. <clears throat> There's a little company called Nintendo <laughs> <laughs> that has given me much respect. Yes, yes, okay? much and love the to Aluna Nintendo. Game, <laughs> they were the ones who 
got their act together during a pandemic, oh a very real pandemic, and they did not care. They wanted a Luna to come out first wow, on their platform, awesome. and they respected the idea, respected me as as somebody that was voicing the game and somebody that was trying to create it and in an indie developer and publisher and all of that. So I'm not apologizing for your joke because I thought it was funny, mm -hmm. but I'm just saying that uh, as far as Nintendo and a little plumber and a little princess goes, wow, Mario Brothers? <laughs> Bro, <laughs> Talk about huge. just wanting 10% of their success. No, 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 listen, they, that, that is <laughs> Just a, give me a little piece of that success. Th that franchise, <laughs> talk about longevity and just being around forever and people still to this day playing it because of the nostalgia that they feel whenever they see that sure. stuff, you know? Uh, I, I remember playing, and, and again, I'm not a gamer, but the, what, the, the one game that I did play was uh, Mario Brothers. Of course, you know? Donkey and, Kong, Mario dude, Brothers. And so, and so, so, so <laughs> I did, didn't mean no disrespect to it, but I was just, you know, s saying how women were portrayed yes. as this frail thing. And again, it's, it's, uh, it speaks to the sentiment of the time. Sure, but all course. across the board. I mean, a lot, yeah. of, a lot of companies have done it. I mean, sure. Disney, Disney oh, wouldn't on. be Disney without it. Come on. And I, you know? I I, I still feed into that. I still like the idea of oh, the... Oh, stop. Of the... Yeah, Don't yeah. Don't get me started on of the, the birds. Of what? <laughs> the <laughs> princess <laughs> getting saved? Listen. Sure. Listen, listen. Let me tell you something. Disney is steady canceling Snow White, Peter Pan, all these things because they're apologizing for them. But if you've ever been to Disneyland and you go on the ride with the birds and you go in there for the Enchanted Tiki Room, hello, me amigos. Welcome to the <laughs> Enchanted Room. You got a freaking Jose Jalapeno as the goddamn damn bird being voiced by a white guy and nobody's canceling those birds and every time I oh get a chance God. to talk about these racist ass hello my friendos <laughs> come on into my crazy world come on we've been talking about it for 300 episodes and nobody's now. doing <laughs> and nothing nobody's about it where's shit. our petition honestly fuck where's it. our cancellation a goddamn Prince Charming kiss Snow White the ride's over listen, dude these fucking birds listen, I know how the this birds the I know how Disney can rectify this problem. Mm -hmm. Pick up a Luna. <laughs> <laughs> Am I doing it right? As your next TV series, mm -hmm. animated series, or whatever. Yep, and we'll put a bird in there that sounds like these. <laughs> and this marvelous voice can be many voices. Oh, dude, I'll be a, I'll be a bird. Yeah, if they so, pick you up, I'll be a bird. I'll be, and I'll, I'll Mexican up that bird. What pasó, mis compadres? The Welcome. Bird, the, the fucking bird could be on a Luna's shoulder the whole time. Oh, my God. Here, fucking bird, go help me. Listen. There's conquistadores on the left. Yes. Ah, ah. <laughs> conquistadores on the right. Ah, ah. Hysterical. Oh, my God. We need to we need to do that. Mm. We need to do that. That bird is... I love it. I oh like that bird. Oh, my God. What would Those, he be named? Give oh, me a dude, name. Pepe. Oh, my God. Because that is not stereotypical <laughs> at all. No. Because we Pe haven't heard the name Pepe, Pepe Beto. for <laughs> Fucking, fucking Mongo, dude. <laughs> oh, I like Mongo. Mongo, go fucking... <laughs> Mongo the bird. Yo, he's my lookout. He that's, looks out for a Luna. <laughs> oh, that's tremendous. Listen, let me, let me take a quick little break. I want to talk about... Who do remember we talked about CBDs the uh, other day? I do recall. And we were talking about how it was coming soon. And you said, oh, the king are coming soon. King now, are coming it's, soon, it's here. And I got to tell you, CBDs, we were talking about, you know, uh, things that have... Uh, not had proper uh, representation. And I think that there has been such a stigma, especially in the Latino community with anything related to cannabis, right? Now, CBDs have no THC. THC is the active ingredient that gets you high when you smoke oh, weed, when you smoke marijuana. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but but CBDs have all the uh, the relaxing medicinal properties, right? Now, this is a pro I, I this is a product that I tried a month ago for the first time, and you know I have a hard time sleeping and getting a full night's sleep, right? And so when when uh, when I talked and and look, people promise to cure everything. Sure, sure. You know, people are like, oh, you know, you take this, you get rid of your high blood pressure, you get rid of your diabetes, your stinky nail, your uh, <laughs> your uh, your impotence. We got it all. We'll fix you if you take Hugo Noni, right? We're not making those kind of promises, but I will tell you this: this product, I took two of these CBDs. Each of them are twenty milligrams, Hooter, mm -hmm. and they 
knock me out. I get a full night's sleep. I feel rested. For me, it worked. And and if you want to try it, go to sweetandchill.com, sweetandchill.com. Dot com. Enter code word. Once you check out, put in uh, your promo code yo, 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 yo. You're going to get 10% off. And free shipping. Are you kidding me, Hooter? Yo, yo, yo! How can I get hooked up? With oh, some dude, sweet we're gonna hit. You, we're gonna hit you up with some sweet and chill. We'll send some to uh, to uh, uh, your uh, um, you know representation. Team. Here Sounds good. Your team, and we're gonna hook you up with some of these uh, uh, CBDs. But again, go to Sweet and Chill. Enter promo code yo yo yo. Get ten percent off your order and free shipping. Are you kidding me? Stop taking Nyquil, you monkeys. Stop, Stop drinking, drinking melatonin. Stop taking oh. Tylenol. P. Stop, like guilty. animals. Stop drinking whiskey. Stop. Guilty. <laughs> Here's the deal. A few weeks ago, I was taking these things. I became a better dad. Okay? Nice. Since then, I ran out. I'm now a deadbeat. But now... <laughs> oh, my God. Thanks. <laughs> Now, thanks to my dad, and, and he the, re-upped, <laughs> now I could go back to being a good dad again. Sweet chill, please save these kids' lives. <laughs> Send more sweet, sweet and, and chill. chill. Listen, Stop. hook him up and hook if these kids up. If your please. baby daddy is Para a niños. deadbeat, Para los niños. get this guy a los lifetime niños. supply, code word yo, yo, yo. Okay? Code word Code word? Code we got to save these kids. No, no. Code word, yo, yo, and yo. And you know what the best thing is? The best thing about this whole thing is we were talking about, you know, we, we, we said the toxic thing when you were mentioning your first agent, and we, we assumed that it was a male. Sweet and Chill is a woman-owned company. Female-owned. Right? You want to talk about uh, an area where women are underrepresented, and that is the weed industry, the CBD industry. So this is a woman-owned company, Go and, mama. And which is fantastic, which mm -hmm. is, you know, you're a girl dad, Hooter. You know what that's all about. And you know what? I'd love for my daughter, too, to own a CBD company one day. And here's the deal. <laughs> And here's the deal, guys. Espera, okay. Espera un momentico. Bitch, if she was making a billion dollars when you, What's your daughter's name? Micaela. Micaela. When you start making a billion dollars with your CBD company, I will take this bit of footage right here mm -hmm. and we're going to put it up to his lovely little face and mm -hmm. be like, see, sí, pa' que tu veas. Put it out in the universe and it's going to happen. You manifest that. Listen, listen, I, I'm, I'm not, I, I'm a, I'm a self-taught guru, but that's besides the point. <laughs> I'm here to tell you this product works <laughs> and it tastes delicious. What does it, it taste like? Amazing. It's amazing. That was so my sweet. next it's question. It's these gummies. They're gummies. They taste, up. they don't have that shitty taste. You know, like sometimes you have something that's medicated and it's yeah, yeah. horrible. Again, if you're taking NyQuil or all these crazy, if you have a cold, take NyQuil. But if you're just trying to sleep, don't be downing NyQuil like an animal. But what don't did it taste like? Gummy bears? They taste like gummy oh. bears. They're little gummy bears. They're, they're little, uh, sweet little gummy bears. My dad um, took took two the other day didn't wake up to do moon water it's unbelievable <laughs> okay? if you want a good night's rest be careful with the dosage take, mm, dude, basically give some to your grandma bro she's not she, usually she's afraid of the fucking marijuana bro don't worry nana just have a gummy and chill out yeah, lady it's not weed you're not gonna do get sweet high sweet and chill make any for kids uh, you know what? If you uh, here's the deal, I sure. have three of them. I popped them each with two. They went right to sleep. It was the best, and that's how I'm able to be a really good dad that's at home. That's how you roll because they're asleep it. the whole time. <laughs> Uh, Just kidding. It's, Don't take away is, my this kids. Is, this is an Don't 18. Give it to your kids. It's 18 and over usually. You know, uh, if you're giving your kid something that's like uh, a lot of parents give their kids. Uh, back in the day, they used to give them whiskey to knock them out. You know, and uh, then it, and then we upgraded to Nyquil. And then they upgraded to Nyquil. I never and, did and, that. And, and, I don't know where that people, came from. People used to give these kids all these baby Nyquil and all that other <laughs> shit, right? <laughs> uh, like, like just you know, ibuprofen, <laughs> la chingada. No, listen, a CBD. <laughs> I'm not saying give it to your kids. That's not what I'm saying here. But it's better than whiskey is what I'm oh answering. my god i literally just lost you the sweet and chill <laughs> I'm just sponsorship i'm kidding we I'm are kidding. we are joking we're people. Joking. joking so but honestly this old. commercial started off very promising oh, very it was great <laughs> and then i fucked it up now, i mean no, i no, messed no, it up oh my off god the rails I, now. I can't curse here right no, no so you can sorry. say are whatever you the hell you want <laughs> are you crazy this is the yo 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 podcast we don't give we give no fucks we've been holding back because you're here i know we don't want to fuck up your image. <laughs> you got way more on the line. <laughs> <laughs> 
sweet and chill hook me up i will definitely give you a shout out because oh. i cannot sleep these days oh for obviously because sure. my mind is racing in a million directions uh so yeah i mean does it help with like a little bit of pain you know how like there's some cbd things? yeah there's some there's a, a lot of times that's the ointment and I, I i haven't taken this for pain but i have i will tell you this i i'm a lot more flexible since i started taking them no listen hooter i know you're laughing but i'm gonna tell you right now <laughs> i'm gonna be seeing my yoga, yoga is just on a whole nother level hey. now you know i stretch <laughs> and i call it yoga but, <laughs> but anyway, so uh, but i'm more I'm, I'm i'm realizing that before i used to be trying to do all these moves and things and now i'm just like i realized so many dude, moves oh not it's not the moves hooter it's just it's the, you'll it's get the your flexibility. you'll get your moves back yes Ooh. yes yes and sweet and, and chill and, will and it'll give you open up the pelvic back. floor it'll open up like your 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 hips which get really really tight i mine are so loose right now i feel like i go out there and do the lambada it's oh amazing my God. so and i want to thank sweet <laughs> and chill for doing that for me i'm not saying it's going to work for you like that but you might as well try it what do you got to lose loosen uh, up that pelvic floor you 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 can get it in uh, uh, the you can get a, a box of 25, a little uh, 50, 100, 150. If you just want to try the 25 one, you're going to get it free shipping all under $20, I think, when it's all set and done. You could afford to try it out and, and check it out. All right. That's uh, that's enough out of that. Uh, we're going to go back to Paula. <laughs> but check out sweetandchill.com. I definitely word, yo, yo, yo. will. I want to do the lambada again. Uh, th there you go. <laughs> definitely. You, um, let's get back to your, 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 your video game is, I hope it really catches on fire. Thank I was you. telling you earlier that uh, as soon as it came out, we bought it. Me and Chiki bought it for, for our kid. I appreciate and the support. She's loving it. She's Yay. like playing it. She hasn't put it down. Uh, and it's just been saying, you know, I would recommend it to anybody. This is awesome. This is great. And I'm just seeing her throw fire, throw all kinds <laughs> of stuff, just running around. And it, and I'm going to uh, put it on the, uh, like you said, the beginner mode, the story mode. The story mode. Story yes. mode. And I'm going to give it a go. I haven't given anything a go since Guitar Hero. So here I go <laughs> with my with my grandpa self uh, uh, trying this. And uh, because I, I think that it's what you're doing is fantastic. I'm a big fan. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I, I, I obviously knew you from your cult film and then from uh, um, on my block. But doing like a little uh, uh, dive into what you've been up to just made me a fan of your work ethic. Not just your body of work, but your work ethic is just tremendous and which leads me to you know uh again we we will go back to the video game in a minute because sure. i think it's huge but uh the show on netflix yes. you know uh um on my block is just it has a uh i think it's ready for its fourth season so we're in production of our fourth season okay look netflix seldom gives you a second season let alone a third uh if you hit four seasons Holy shit, whatever you're doing is, uh, you've, you guys have managed to capture lightning in a bottle. Uh, what other freaking uh, <laughs> crazy cliche can I throw out here? Because it just doesn't happen. Netflix is very, very, um, you know, they're, they're not afraid to pull the plug and they don't give a fuck if it's Latino, if it's white, if it's whatever the hell it is. Netflix is a machine and this machine makes no errors. This no. is a well-oiled machine. So Be four seasons Holy shit, Paul. Yeah, I mean, Theo Netflix can be rough sometimes, right? <laughs> sure. Let's let's just put it out there, but but I am so grateful to Theo Netflix these days because um first of all, the show is a hit and I have to shout out the showrunner and the creator of the show who is a lady, right? She's wow. a woman. Her Here, name this is This is a theme today. Her name mm -hmm. is Lauren Unerick and uh she's really a a, a superhero, honestly. Um and she she wrote it, uh, created it, she directs it. And she's a true mentor, and uh, and I'll get back to that in a moment. Uh, but as far as Netflix and as far as On My Block goes, we also, uh, and I say we because the cast, uh, cast and crew behind and in front of the camera, uh, we all are in agreement uh, that Theo Netflix can be rough, and they only listen to audience and numbers, okay? Mm -hmm. Audience and numbers, and I will repeat this. Uh, the fan base, the fandom that On My Block has been able to contain and to hold attention to, right, is just incredible because of them, 
because of them we have a fourth season because they voice it uh they put it out on social media on all of the pro- platforms they put out videos they they shout me out and i'm just the mom on the show you know and so basically it's due to the fans that uh, we have a fourth season and i am so appreciative i'm working right now even during a pandemic netflix has made it extremely safe to work with each other um and not only that netflix and lauren unerick who is the creator of the show gave me my first shot after 32 years of being in the business my first shot at directing so yes i directed an episode it's second episode of season four so when you watch season four if you could shout out that you love the second episode in particular (laughs) maybe mama can keep on directing because i loved it did you really oh my god soy tan mandona Mm. i am like just like trying to tell everybody what to do no i i really loved it i i have a obviously i i feel for the actors i understand the actors and i just i'm there as a humble leader to make uh, uh, in service of everyone, including cl- including the crew, especially the crew. But I'm there to make sure that the actors shine and that they can do their best work w- in their best conditions. So I basically am there as you know, as 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 whatever they want me to be, right? And as far as for the crew and the and the producers, I am there to do their show in service of them and their vision. And and when you when you're a director, one of the things that you have to be is really humble because uh, it was my first time. I didn't know a lot of things. But when I didn't know uh, uh, the answer to a question, because you get a million, as a director, you get a million questions thrown at you at the same time. When I didn't know the answer, I was honest, I don't know, but I made it my business to find out ASAP and bring them back the answer, right? And and then rely on the experts, uh, the you know crews on the crew on this show is spectacular, and everyone from visual effects to editing to just lighting, the DP, the sound, everyone knows exactly what to do and what they're doing, and they were so gracious to me. And the fact that I'm just this like petite girl who's like just really trying to expand my education. And again, I, I, the only reason why I brought it up is because I want people to know that yes, um, you know, there's a thing against Latinas and against being a female, but there's also like ageism. Ageism is a very real thing. Mm-hmm. And I'm at a certain age where I'm not even supposed to start any new careers. And the fact that I was able to start a new career, right? Cause being a director is a new thing for me. And it's a very, real career like i could really yeah, expand yeah. this career and uh netflix didn't care that i was a latina netflix didn't care that i was of a certain age and again lauren Yurnerik, it was her idea to put me through a program uh and to make sure that i was set up for success and that's what true mentors do and i hope that i can mentor uh through talking and <laughs> through telling people that it's never too late so you can always change your career just make sure that you're ready to work really hard to be disciplined and that you're going to get a lot of no's right you get a, p- a lot of no's but when when a yes comes along and that door opens you better be ready you better be ready to bring it you know and so uh th- that's one of the things that has saved me Mm -hmm. throughout my life and it's a theme throughout my career and my personal life that when somebody gave me a little finger i took the whole arm (laughs) you know it's like so yeah i mean this didn't come out of nowhere i was ever since i got on the show uh whispering in everybody's ear can i can i shadow you you're the dp can i shadow you can i shadow you you're the director um and and so i was able to shadow season three then we had the pandemic 2020 and we didn't even know if we were going to get a uh, season four. But through the pandemic, I was able to do uh, a director's program via Zoom. So I didn't stay still even when I was home. Right. And then when season four came along and they were like, well, we might be considering you. I was like, I'm ready. I'm ready. I've been learning uh, all these things. And, you know, and so, yeah, you just you just have to keep on educating yourself. You don't know everything. I don't, I still, I still don't know anything. 
I still have to read so much. I have to talk to people, the interact. I have to be, you know, I have to be with everyone because every single experience you can learn something from. And sometimes, and I would say maybe most of the times, the bad experiences are the ones that teach you the most. Mm. I don't know. That's been my my experience. Yeah. So sometimes I I'm even grateful for the bad times that I've yeah, had. You, you do learn them. <laughs> um, acting, uh, comic book, video game, directing now. Yes. Um, out of all those, I know I don't I don't want you to pick one. Which one do you feel stimulates you and excites you more about the future? So, uh, Aluna VIP is, uh, even though it sounds like, you know, success story or whatever, it's still such an underdog story. Mm -hmm. And uh, behind the scenes, it's like sometimes I'm crying and like thinking like, why? I can't believe it. But like, blah, 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 what all these things, right? So, Aluna uh, VIP is the thing that I think drives me the most because it really encompasses everything that I've been exposed to as an actor, as a director, as a producer, as a creator, as a writer, I can do it all with Aluna. So if if I do reach like the ultimate goal, which would be like um, Aluna, the TV series or the animated series or the movie, I would be able to you know either voice it or produce it or write some of it or direct it, right? So it's like Aluna is still an underdog story. So. I hope that people appreciate uh, that Aluna is like a true superhero because much, you know, most of the really cool superheroes are underdog stories. Um, most of the true superheroes are these heroes that are super flawed, right? And that their ride is not like just straight to the top and whatever. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna keep riding this wave. Um, you know, I, I've always been in awe of like the surfers here in California and, you know, been able to, you know, there's so much like I love the water and I love all of that. So the metaphor here is like I'm going to try to be like the coolest surfer and just ride this wave with with Luna, you know, Dude, that is beautiful. I got to tell you, uh, it's super inspiring to hear you talk. Uh, just listening to your whole story, you know, we've, we've, you know, we've been talking to you now for about an hour and just listening to the, the whole path, you know, when you, uh, mentioned that you, you went back home, you had to go deal with being a young mom, had to deal with being on, on, uh, government assistance and whatever. It, it, the fact that you still had the drive to keep moving forward, to never lose that vision. A lot of people would have you know, given up. A lot of people would have been like, oh, fuck it, this is, you know, the choices I made, let me just lay in this and, and wallow in this, and, and then years later think about, I could have done this, I could have done that. You, sure. you you didn't do none of that shit. And to be fair, it would have been easy at that point, because at that really point, you, you had already done, sure. I mean, so much. Correct. You mean so, like to give up? You mean yes. to yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, like it would have said, so hey, I already Look, this. I did this already. Yep. I mean, and so the fact that you didn't and you kept moving forward is super inspirational. And I think that for the people listening, you know, uh, especially the, the, you know, I, and I know we get, you know, black, white, uh, Persian, uh, th th whatever the hell, but for the, uh, the minorities that are out there that are listening that, that say, you know, we don't get a break, we don't get this. At the end of the day, you said something that when that opportunity comes, make sure you're freaking ready, make sure you're prepared because if you're not, then what the hell do you, what, what are you screaming that you want a, a shop for? What are you yeah. screaming that you want an opportunity for? Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people think that, you know, they should just, they, they're owed something. Nobody's owed a damn thing. Nobody owes you shit. Uh, it's up to you to go get it. I love that you went to Comic Con. You saw the void, and 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 yeah, you said, "What the hell, man? We have no representation." But when somebody said, "Well, then put it out there," you didn't just say, ah, "That's too hard." No, you, you fucking you put it. it out there. That's insane. And that's 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 dude. That is so freaking inspiring. Not just to uh, me, but I hope to everybody that's listening because whatever the heck you're waiting for and wherever you feel underrepresented i hear people you know and rightly so a lot of times pointing out the injustices and the uh underrepresentation 
but unfuck it. We have tools today where you could put content out there without waiting for somebody to come and give you that shot. Sure. You give yourself that shot. You put your shit out there. And if it's good, people will uh, uh, flock to it because it'll resonate with them. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you uh, uh, are a perfect example of putting it out there and having it just blossom, dude. Uh, you know, I, I had a lot of help. Uh, yes, a lot of luck. Uh, but it's been 12 years in the making, and for those of you who uh, don't know, uh, behind the scenes, uh, I got more no's than yeses. I got, uh, you know, sometimes very little money <laughs> um, or no money, and it was literally just because uh, I don't understand the word no. Um, I, I, do, I do feel that if I kick some doors down, it'll stay open for some people behind me, and I had a very old school type of grandmother, very old school type of abuelita right and she was like the she had like so many messages so many lessons but one of the biggest lessons is so simple if you don't ask you don't get so a lot of the times i feel like our community is is afraid to even ask yeah. right because they assume that the opportunity is not there you'd be surprised who is willing to give you that shot who is willing to to help you and so i've always asked sometimes I get branded as annoying or whatever, but hey, whoever gets it and gets me gets to come along for the ride and, and, and gets to be my friend and I'm super loyal. And so, hey, I think, again, it's super simple, but if you don't ask, you won't get. So just, just ask, honestly, just ask. Don't be afraid to ask. Uh, yeah. And I'll speak for the Latinx community. We tend not to try to rock the boat, mm -hmm. you know? No, 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 no. No molestes allá. Tú nomás, you know, just work hard y cállate. No, no. They'll, they'll notice. You know, not all the time does it get noticed. You know, no. the, there's a there's a, a reason why, again, not to say the old saying, but the, the squeaky wheel gets the grease, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, and, and sometimes you got to be that squeaky wheel because otherwise nobody's going to notice. And, uh, and, and who gives a shit what people say? Oh, that person's annoying. The person is the person who gives a shit meanwhile they're rising to the top while you're sitting there with your head down but i'm quiet stop it stop it stop it stop it and go chase what the hell you want um thank you so much for joining us here oh, I yeah. had this a is blast. awesome uh i think uh <laughs> let's let's uh, your website what's your website so you can follow me on all my social media on mm -hmm. twitter it's paula garces one on instagram instagram you can make fun of me but please don't it's the real paula garces <laughs> The real Paula Garces. <laughs> because the fake Paula Garces is fabulous, but it's not me. Uh, and uh, Facebook, it's official Paula Garces. Oh, wow. Please follow Aluna Superhero, uh, at Aluna Superhero, and that's her handle on all the social media. Um, again, go get the game. It's on Nintendo Switch and Steam. It's $19.99, super affordable. But if for some reason you can't afford that, and, and I, there's many reasons right now, especially with this pandemic, I am having a contest guys what oh. yes so just follow me on all my social media tag three people tell share it uh, share with other people there's gonna be lots of winners uh, who are gonna win t-shirts and comic books and free game codes for Nintendo switch or Steam whichever one you prefer and the grand prize is a Nintendo switch the game and a comic book so yeah, June 9th is gonna be like the last day of the contest. So. Let me tell you guys something right now. So free, free game. Nineteen ninety nine for a video game is a freaking steal. Video games cheaper are than a movie. Not cheaper cheap. than going to the movies. Video games are so expensive a lot of times, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And now nineteen ninety nine, super affordable. Get your get your uh, Biden bucks and go out there <laughs> and buy a Luna. Get your get yes. your stymie. Get those. Get Why that not? Cash. stimulus package and have yes. their have your kids buy themselves this game. Yes. Okay, dude. If you're getting <laughs> if you that need child, a break. If you're getting that child credit, get that child credit and buy the game. And if you need a break and you need to put your kid in, you know, some screen time, put them on the Nintendo Switch or on the PC and don't feel too guilty about it because they might be interested in history and real things about ancient civilizations in South America, Central America, the Caribbean. Right? Sell some Dogecoin and buy there the game, we guys. Go. Uh, and yeah, the, the history, dude, that's like, that's another thing. Like I am, I, I'm a big history buff. Like when you start talking about Incas and Mayans and Aztecs and that whole, you know, the conquistadores and the conquest and, and, uh, you know, uh, mother earth, you know, just the, the whole mother earth, uh, uh, 
¿Cómo se llama? Uh, deity. Yes. Um, and the moon. Th and the moon. Dude, it, you know. Big uh, fan of the moon, this guy. I'm a big fan of the <laughs> Biggest Listen. fan the moon has probably. What are you, <laughs> what are you the what are you a fan of? What do you what do you Beer <laughs> Which one? Alcohol. <laughs> what type? And not hangovers. Sweet and chill C B Ds. Do we have a liquor sponsor? Do we not want yet. one? <laughs> so funny. Was a, I dabble. I dabble. It was a full moon last night, a big blood moon, a, a flower moon. Who was there? there? Yeah, was yeah, it? it was the flower moon because it's the spring and so it's the, the, the okay. moon. Of the flower. Yeah, and so. you were able to see the flower within <laughs> the there moon. You go. No, I'm there serious. You it was go. the gray spots that are in the moon. It was very close to us Hooter. and it was in the shit. I'm serious. Okay. Hooter's the shit. <laughs> Sort of just I, I, no, no, no. <laughs> I hop into this shit and then he talks shit when I do know a little <laughs> bit about the moon. But a hooter, you didn't answer my question. So how do how do I how do I get to your heart? Like what what if I bring you a bottle, what bottle would this be? Um I'm a, okay. Let's go there. Come I'm on. A I'm a big fan of tequila centenario. Wait, um, yeah, you know me. Not a cheap date at all. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus and honestly, Christ. I even go to Posado, which it costs about twenty two. Not Why even you go with Casa de 32. Dragones, like the three hundred dollar bottle. I mean, jeez. <laughs> Meanwhile, when I go to his house, he serves me up Costco tequila. Do you really? <laughs> no, you don't. And to be fair, so I, wait, wait, hold on, I am hold on. I'm Mexican American. Are you Mexican yeah, American? Yeah, but to be fair, what kind? Mexican, are you? <laughs> to be fair, by the time my dad gets to my house, he's already loaded, so he can't even taste oh, the difference. Oh my God. So he's like, he's not even gonna. Mm, know he's it. not even gonna taste I'm it. I'm not giving him top shelf. Oh my I'm God. I'm not giving him to my top be shelf. be fair. Hooter, oh. Dios mío, the man who gave you life. Thank you. Tu vida. Yes. Yes, wow. praise God I didn't pull out of your mother. And wow. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't Thanks make, to the moon. Don't make me my margaritas with the cheap tequila no, when I go no, to your barbecue. Uh, also, I will shout you out. The Kirkland Añejo isn't <laughs> bad. 21 bucks. You, they give you like five liters of this shit. Five Honestly, <laughs> we need five liters. Oh my gosh. To, they, they pay you like 10 bucks to take 10 of these bottles. It's the best, dude. It's not bad. Enter cold word yo, yo, yo. <laughs> guys, seriously, I need a good margarita recipe. So a good if you margarita guys recipe. Know a good margarita recipe, let me know. Hook me up. Let's do this. Yeah, Hooter's a mixologist on the side. Over there. Are you? <laughs> He's not. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Follow me for more recipes. Oh, my God. If your shit blows up oh. for being a mixologist. I know. Uh, all right. Listen, Buckle before, up. Okay, before we leave, I got one more thing. Since you were doing all the, the, the ancient history and the mythology and all that <laughs> We stuff, went from liquor and then, to <laughs> And then like, no, 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 no. What do you know about La Ciguanaba, if anything? I do not know anything. Okay, what is okay. La Ciguanaba? That's the Salvadorian version of La Llorona who had a kid with uh, the sun god and then she would neglect them. And she was, uh, her, her name, her original name was... Uh, Siwewet, which means beautiful woman. And wow. then Tlaloc, the god Tlaloc got mad because she would neglect the kid and the kid would just go out there and eat ashes and got fat. And so Tlaloc got mad and he cursed her and he turned her into a, a, this ugly woman. And she, like, if you're a dude and you go out there and you're cheating, you find her and then you try to hook up with her and then she turns into death and she kills you. So, but... Uh, that, Moral of the story, don't go out to the lake. Don't go out to the lake. To try to hook up with some yeah. lady. So, Because so, she just might be La Llorona. But no, she la has Ciguanaba. a big fat La Ciguanaba. La Llorona and La Ciguanaba. That's a... That, uh, it's that, kind of... That's but, my horror story. Is it, the, is it, is it the, <laughs> The, the chick with the fat booty yes Woo! and that's how she reels you in <laughs> she reels you in with like, the oh, booty shit, who's this around. honey with the big fat it ass it is always yeah. the then, booty guys so the, the llorona is I mis hijos this one's I mis patojos so is this your person <laughs> <laughs> so is this a personal uh, you know a no, memory no, 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 of yours no, 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 did this no, no, happen no, to just, you un amigo le pasó a un amigo it happened to a friend we like to warn everybody we like to yeah <laughs> no, just because, like, the show comes uh, with public service announcements. Oh, we, we, this, we're all about that. 
Paula, thank you so much for joining thank us here. You. Everybody, uh, go out there, get a Luna, get the video game, uh, follow this woman and all her social media, and and uh, enter the contest. Get yourself a game, get yourself a Switch. Uh, and thank you guys for tuning in to oh, another episode of guys. the Yo 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 podcast with Martin and Hooter. And uh, have yourselves a great, great holiday week. Uh, God bless you. Hallelujah. There you go. Que Dios los bendiga. Satarakata Shanda. Peace. <laughs>